This week's Technique Tuesday video is another in a series on different types of yarns. This week, I'll be discussing chain yarns. If you'd like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to see the chapter titles and starting points for each section. Chain yarns are basically knitted tubes. <laughs> so if you look at this one, this is a, uh, a, ch a sort of a basic chain yarn and you can see that there's this kind of very fine strand coming out from the top here. If I pull on it, you can kind of see how this is starting to come apart like that. So that's how these are constructed. They're basically a couple of stitches, uh, a couple of knitted stitches that are formed into a tube and that is what forms the yarn. If you use more stitches than just a couple like this, then you can end up with an actual, you know, tube of knitting like this that becomes what's called a ribbon yarn or tape yarn because this tube is just going to collapse on itself and lie flat. Uh, in this case, this type of ribbon yarn, because it's made from knitting itself, when you wrap it around the needle, it's just going to compress into a more dense tube. And, and it's going to look like, um, like stitches. It's going to look like really thick stitches. Then the last type of chain yarn is called blown yarn. And the way this type of yarn is constructed is by using a tube like this, only a much smaller tube made with very fine strands. Uh, and that tube might be made from cotton or nylon or silk. And then into that tube, they open up that tube and they blow short, soft fibers into this tube. And so they, they're fibers that are going to poke out of the openings between the stitches and create a halo effect around the tube. Depending on what the tube is made from and the, what the fibers are that are blown into it and how much room is between the stitches in the tube, you're going to get different sorts of effects. You can see that this green one looks fuzzier than this blue one. So this blue one uses a white cotton tube and then they've blown into it merino fibers. So the, the tube is made from cotton that hasn't been dyed and into the tube are, are blown uh, merino fibers that have been dyed blue. Where this one, it's really hard to see the tube partly because it's dark, but also because the tube has been dyed. So this one has a nylon tube and you can kind of see it if I pull it sideways, you might be able to see that there is a, a tube there. And so this tube is nylon and it's dyed to match the fibers that are blown into it. And these fibers are alpaca with a little bit of merino, but the tube itself is nylon. Let's look at the qualities of the fabric that can be, that is made from yarns like this. So this is a, 70% linen, 30% cotton blend. Both of those yarns are inelastic and they can kind of hurt your hands when you are knitting with them because they just don't have any give. Flax, is, which is what linen fabric is made from, is very stiff and uh, when you're knitting with it. And over time, it softens up and it will get more draped. But as you're knitting with it, it can really hurt your hands. And what I noticed with this yarn is that the yarn itself has more drape and um, has a little bit of give to it. This yarn is 100% linen. It doesn't really uh, stretch <laughs> at all. But this yarn, this um, chain yarn does have a little bit of give to it. And, and one of the things that that give allows the finished fabric is that it will actually have some more elasticity. It will actually go back into its um, original sh shape a little more uh, than just a regular plied linen yarn would do. So this is the sleeve of a sweater I knit a couple of years ago using a, a chainette yarn that was made of mostly merino with a little bit of nylon. So it was a yarn that was just like this, it's just a, a different colorway um, than the one that I have in my hand. But wool is an elastic fiber. And so when you make a chainette yarn 
from an elastic fiber, you get a really elastic yarn. One of the qualities of these chainette yarns when they're made from wool fibers like this is that they're basically like a hollow tube. And so you get, um, you get way more yardage in 100 grams uh, with this type of construction than you would get with a plied yarn. So for example, uh, this yarn came in 50 gram balls. It's a bulky weight yarn and there were I think 120 yards of bulky weight yarn in a 50 gram ball. And that is the kind of yardage that you'd normally see with a DK weight yarn that was plied. Because there is less fiber per yard and yet the size of the yarn is just as big, that means there's more air in this yarn and it's very warm. So it's warm, but it doesn't like physically weigh as much. So this sweater, which is kind of an oversized sweater made from bulky weight yarn, weighs half as much as it would have weighed if I'd used a plied yarn. Because the yarn is so stretchy, typically you need to use a larger needle when you're knitting with it. So when you're using your normal knitting tension and knitting with it, the stitches will be uh, stretched around a larger needle and then as they come off the needle, they'll stretch back to the correct size. So you need a bigger needle to kind of stretch them out while you're knitting, but as soon as they come off the needles, then they'll go into the, the proper size. So this is a fingerless mitt that I just knit in stockinette and ribbing with a blown yarn, one of the blown yarns, um, but, and then I knit a swatch with cables. So because these yarns are so round, they're just so round, that means you get really great stitch de definition when you knit with a stitch pattern and you also, which means it's also really great for cables. So you get some really nice looking uh, cables when you use one of these kinds of uh, blown yarns. They're really nice uh, for that. The tubes that are used for blown yarns tend to be cotton, nylon, or silk. Silk would be used for a real luxury type of yarn where nylon or cotton would be used for sort of mid-range yarns or uh, less expensive yarns. I have noticed that when cotton is used for the tube, the, the tube tends to, to be white and the fibers that are blown into it are the ones that are colored and it creates this kind of interesting effect. When a nylon or silk tube is used, in my experience, again, may not be always true, um, but when nylon or silk is used as the tube, those tend to be dyed to match the yarn, uh, match the fibers that are blown into it. Now the fibers that are blown into, into these tend to be short staples and they tend to be soft. So blown yarns do tend to be warmer than their plied counterparts because the fibers are kind of loose and in all directions within the tube, as opposed to being kind of lined up and twisted together to form a standard plied yarn. Chain yarns provide structure and elasticity to fibers like linen, cotton, and alpaca, which are inelastic and sometimes a bit limp. Wool yarns are warmer and lighter than their plied counterparts when they are formed into a standard chain yarn or blown into a chain tube. Their rounded shape offers great stitch definition for knit purl patterns and cable patterns. There are several good databases for learning more about specific yarns as well as several books. Ravelry has an extensive yarn database where you can learn more about a yarn you have or a yarn called for in a pattern that you would like to knit. Yarnsub.com is an excellent resource for discovering whether one yarn is a good substitute for another. And in addition, I can recommend two books that provide lots of information on different types of yarns and what sorts of projects those yarns are good for. The first book is Clara Park's The Knitter's Book of Yarns, which explains different yarn types chapter by chapter, including sample projects suitable for those types of yarns. Another is Yarn Substitution by Carol J. Sukoski, which explains the qualities of different types of yarns and how to determine whether a yarn is an appropriate substitution to use in a particular project. I will include links down in the description for all of these resources. 
you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.